So let's talk about the treatment for shin splints. Now, when I have clients come in when they have shin splints, usually, and I say this quite confidently, 90% of the time, it will probably be in the lower half. Okay, now you will get some individuals and some athletes that have it in the upper half, but most of the time it will be in the lower half. Now the first thing you need to work out is how reactive these shin splints are. So does that mean that they actually have to run for a quite a while before it actually becomes quite symptomatic or can they reproduce it quite quickly? So if they can reproduce it quite quickly, then part of what I do in terms of my treatment process is I, I assess and I treat as I go. So I might get my athletes up just either hopping or doing some calf raises and really isolate exactly where they feel it. And then we can basically go straight into the treatment from there. So I'll probably urge you to do that if you can because it really gives you a, a great overview of really isolating the areas where we find. Okay so let's talk a little bit about the anatomy itself in this area because shin splints or medial tibial stress syndrome obviously affects this medial compartment here. So we have our tibia down here okay and if we just roll off we're in this little pocket of muscles that are basically the deep toe flexors. Okay, so we've got our flexor hullus, we've got our flexor dig, and then we've got tibialis posterior. So that makes up the bulk of our medial compartment there. Now, in terms of working in this area, it really depends on how much tone and tonicity that you have in your gastrocoeus as well. So we're all familiar with our gastroceleus, okay? So that's the head of the gastro, and then down here we'll have our soleus, okay? And then obviously we've got the Achilles here as well. So it's within the border of your tibia, in this pocket here, that's where our deep toe flexes, okay? So these are the muscles that create a lot of this medial tibial stress syndrome, okay? Now, if it develops and gets really quite bad, what can happen is some of the lining of these muscles that attach onto the bone itself can start to become sore and they can actually tear away from the bone. So that is actually quite nasty. But having said that, that's actually really quite rare. You will find shin splints will be probably come on in and around when athletes have had a layoff for a while or they're coming back and they're stepping up a lot of their training so obviously for Mon at the start of her season that's when she tends to feel she gets a lot of her shin splints and that's certainly common for most of them.